India's CHANDRAYAAN-3 spacecraft entered lunar orbit. The CHANDRAYAAN-3 spacecraft led by the Indian Space Research Organization has successfully entered lunar orbit. The first photographs of the silver globe taken by the probe have reached Earth. The mission assumes landings near the south pole of our natural satellite in late August. India's newest spacecraft, Chandrayaan-3, entered lunar orbit on Saturday. If all goes according to plan, the spacecraft will land near the moon's little explored south pole. The landing attempt is scheduled to take place between August 23rd and 24. The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, said. So far, only Russia, the United States and China have managed to make a controlled landing on the lunar surface. The CHANDRAYAAN-3 mission consists of an orbiter, a lander and a rover. The lander's name is Vikram which means bravery in sanskrit and the rover's name is pragyan which means wisdom in sanskrit the mission's name chandrayaan means lunar vehicle in sanskrit india is implementing its ambitious program on a relatively low budget the CHANDRAYAAN-3 mission cost 6.1 billion rupees, about 75 million dollars. This is much less than the missions carried out in recent years by leading space agencies. Experts say India can keep costs down by copying and adapting existing space technology and by having an abundance of highly skilled engineers who work for a fraction of what their Western counterparts do. The rocket used in the mission is much weaker than the one that the Americans flew to the moon as part of the Apollo program. The probe circled the Earth several times to gain speed on its way to the Silver Globe and it still took longer to reach the moon than the manned U.S. missions of the 1960s and 1970s, which reached our natural satellite in a matter of days. The CHANDRAYAAN-3 mission is India's third attempt to reach the moon. The first CHANDRAYAAN-1 mission launched in 2008. But it was not intended to land. Consisting of an orbiter and an impactor, it conducted the most detailed search yet for water ice on the moon. She also made topographic maps of the surface of the silver globe. It lasted over a year and was an important boost to India's space program. The CHANDRAYAAN-2 mission which was launched in July 2019, consisted of three parts, an orbiter, a lander and a rover. The Vikram lander was to land near the moon's south pole and launch the six-wheeled rover Pragyan from its belly to search for water and other minerals. Unfortunately, in the last phase of the flight, just before touching the surface of the silver globe, the CHANDRAYAAN-2 mission controllers lost contact with the Vikram lander. A few months later, astronomers found the remains of Indian equipment. However, the CHANDRAYAAN-2 mission was not a total failure. The orbiter was not damaged and is still observing the lunar surface. The CHANDRAYAAN-3 mission has the same goals as its predecessor. It is also more likely to be successful. Sridhara Panaka Samanath, 
head of ISRO, emphasized that engineers carefully studied the data from the last disaster, fixed defects and conducted exercises and simulations. Chandrayaan-3 entered the orbit of the Silver Globe on Saturday. Its structure and content is similar to the previous failed mission. The whole thing weighs nearly four tons. The Vikram lander itself weighs about 1,500 kilograms and carries a 26-kilogram Prugian rover in its belly, which is estimated to have a lifespan of about two weeks. ISRO has released photos taken from the orbiter. The images show craters on the lunar surface that get bigger as the spacecraft approaches. According to flight controllers, Chandrayaan-3 is in good health, and all components are operating normally. Now that the spacecraft has entered lunar orbit, it will gradually decelerate to allow Vikram to land safely. The lander will separate from the propulsion module in orbit. A series of complex braking maneuvers will then be performed to facilitate a soft landing in the lunar South Pole region on August 23. ISRO said in a statement, after landing, the six-wheeled rover will roam rocks and craters on the lunar surface, collecting key data and images that will be sent back to Earth for analysis. The rover has five science instruments on board that will focus on studying the physical properties of the Moon's surface, near-surface atmosphere and tectonic activity to study what is happening below the surface. Hundreds of ancient ceremonial complexes have been discovered in southern Mexico. A team of scientists led by researchers at the University of Arizona, using an aerial laser mapping technology called LIDAR, has discovered close to 500 ancient ceremonial complexes in southern Mexico. The buildings were built thousands of years ago probably by the Mayans and Olmecs. According to the authors of the research, the find changes the current understanding of the beginnings of Mesoamerican civilization and the relationship between the Olmecs and the Maya. A team of archaeologists led by scientists from the University of Arizona announced last year the discovery of the oldest and largest structure built by the Maya. The huge rectangular platform, called Aguada Fenix, whose longer side is nearly 1.5 kilometers long, was built around a thousand years BC. Now the same team of researchers is reporting more discoveries. Using LIDAR data covering a large area in southern Mexico, the researchers discovered nearly 500 ceremonial complexes, not as large as Aguada Fenix, but with similar characteristics. The team's findings are detailed in a new paper published in the journal Nature Human Behavior. The new study used the LIDAR system, which is short for light detection and ranging. It is a measurement method based on irradiating the target with a laser and registering the reflection with sensors. Differences in the return time of the reflected light beam and the change in wavelength are used to create three-dimensional terrain models. Thanks to this breakthrough technology, which has taken a high place among the tools useful to archaeologists by storm, you can see the topography of the land without the top layer of vegetation. LIDAR penetrates the tree canopy and reflects the three-dimensional forms of archaeological features hidden beneath the vegetation. Researchers can digitally remove trees, plants, 
and even water from images, revealing hidden structures. Nadar has already proven its usefulness. In 2018, with the help of this technology, in the Guatemalan jungle, the ruins of over 60,000 houses, palaces and other structures were discovered that had been hidden from the sight of modern man for centuries. Thanks to Ladar, archaeologists also revealed the true size of the 40,000-year-old city of Angamoco, found a decade ago buildings and other structures. Thanks to Ladar data, scientists identified 478 complexes in the Mexican states of Tabasco and Veracruz. Ladar research covered an area of approximately 85,000 square square kilometers, which is roughly the size of Ireland. The data provided by Ladar allows scientists to explore vast areas when they see something interesting in the analyzed area. They go to the site or use high-resolution Ladar to explore the area in more detail. Until recently, it was unthinkable to study such a large area, said Takeshi Inamata, first author of the paper. Nadar is changing archaeology, he added, dating back to 3,000 years ago. The structures, still hidden under vegetation, include huge platforms that may have been used for ceremonial gatherings and other religious events. The sheer number of places found is staggering. The study will inspire, hopefully, Decades of research at these uncovered sites, said Thomas Garrison, an archaeologist at the University of Texas at Austin, who was not involved in the work. The newly discovered sites are located in a vast area that includes the region inhabited by the Olmec civilization and the Mayan civilization. The complexes were probably built between 1100 and 400 BC. The Maya civilization stretched across what is now southern Mexico, Guatemala, Belize and parts of western Honduras. There is a long-running debate in the scientific community as to whether the Olmec civilization led to the development of the Mayan civilization, or whether the Maya developed independently. Scientists have found that the newly discovered complexes, as well as the previously mentioned Aguada Phoenix, have similar characteristics to structures from the earliest known center of Olmec civilization, San Lorenzo, located in the southeastern part of the state of Veracruz in Mexico, which reached its heyday between 1400 and 1100 B. C. In San Lorenzo, Scientists also found a previously unrecognized rectangular platform. Scholars believe that the Aguada Phoenix built in the Mayan-dominated area and other related sites began to take a form similar to the structures at San Lorenzo around 1100 BC. According to them, San Lorenzo served as a template for later constructions, including the Aguada Phoenix. Aguada Phoenix is a rectangular platform, the longer side of which is 1,413 meters long and the shorter one is 399 meters long. The structure has a height of 9 to 15 meters. Other, smaller structures are scattered around it. Squares, roads or remains of artificial water reservoirs. 
the same pattern of a large platform surrounded by smaller platforms appears elsewhere in the region, suggesting a broader cultural pattern. People have always thought that San Lorenzo was very special and different from what came later in terms of landscaping. But now we show that San Lorenzo is very similar to Aguada Phoenix. It has a rectangular square surrounded by platforms. These features become very clear when we look at him from above, which Ladar offers us and can also be found in Aguada Phoenix, which was built a little later. All this tells us that San Lorenzo is very important. That is the beginning of some of these concepts that were later used by the Mayans, Inamata said. If this was indeed the case, then San Lorenzo reveals an important link between these two distinct civilizations which partially overlapped in time but peaked in different chapters of history. The Olmec civilization flourished from 2000 BCE to 250 CE, while the Maya grew stronger in the later period from roughly 250 to 900 CE. This, in turn, indicates that the relationship between the Olmec and the Maya was more complex and diverse than previously thought. In addition to analyzing data collected by Ladar, the team also conducted preliminary ground surveys at 62 sites. The structures discovered by Inamata and his colleagues were probably used as places of ritual assembly. These include large open spaces where many people can gather and participate in rituals. The researchers also analyzed the orientation of each site and found that some of them appeared to face sunrise on specific dates in the Mesoamerican calendars, suggesting that the ritual processes involved cosmological concepts related to celestial movements and seasons. Although it is not clear why these specific dates were chosen, Inamata emphasized that this is only the beginning of the study of the newly discovered structures. There are still many unanswered questions, he said.